Hello and welcome to this short service of worship which has been prepared for the churches of Cowie and Pleen linked with Bannockburn Allen and on behalf of these congregations we're delighted to welcome those of you who are joining us from elsewhere. My name is Ken Russell and in my retirement I have the pleasure and privilege of serving as part-time locum minister for Cowie, Pleen and Bannockburn Allen. I invite us to pause. In the quietness and stillness, let us be aware that all around us is the God of all life. Grant, O God, that in all our time of testing and self-questioning, we may know your presence to lighten our path and help us at all times to seek your guidance. As I say the Lord's Prayer, please feel free to join in with me either out loud or in your own head. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever. Amen. And now a reading from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 4, reading from verse 1 through to verse 11. The Temptation of Jesus When Jesus was led by the Spirit into the desert to be tempted by the devil. After fasting for forty days and forty nights, he was hungry. The tempter came to him and said, If you are the Son of God, tell these stones to become bread. Jesus answered, It is written, Man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city, and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. If you are the Son of God, he said, throw yourself down, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you, and they will lift you up in their hands, so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. Jesus answered him, It is also written, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. Again the devil took him to a very high mountain, and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendour. All this I will give you, he said, if you will bow down and worship me. Jesus said to him, Away from me, Satan, for it is written, Worship the Lord your God, and serve him only. Then the devil left him, and angels came and attended him. Amen. May God bless to us this reading from his word. To his name be the praise and the glory. According to the church calendar, we are almost at the end of Lent. Lent being the six weeks of preparation for Easter. The Bible reading which we've just had, which describes the testing and tempting of Jesus in the wilderness, is traditionally read at the start of Lent, not as we get near to the end of it. So why this reading today? Well, the church calendar or the church year does two things. First of all, it leads us through the major events in the life, death and resurrection of Jesus, starting with Advent when we wait and prepare for Christmas, where we remember his birth, 
we move through the life of Jesus and on into the life of the church. So the church's year is really an annual journey through the life, death and resurrection of Jesus and on into his life in us as we now carry on his work. But the second thing which the church year does for us is quite different. Each season or time in the church year has a particular feel to it and there are themes related to it. For example, at Christmas we are bombarded on television and all around us by adverts telling us that if we buy this food or drink or this gift then we will have the perfect Christmas. But in the Bible story we find a couple who are experiencing tensions. An angel, you said, I write. A long journey to Bethlehem. There's no room. You should have booked ahead. Let's be honest. Our own experiences of Christmas often combine joy with other things that are going on. Tension, illness, financial or other worries. More like the real first Christmas. And that earthy connectedness of the Bible stories to our own human experiences can speak to us at any time throughout the year. And so the Lent story of 40 days in the wilderness can speak to us during actual Lent in the church calendar, but can also speak to us whenever we feel in the wilderness. And have we not also entered a wilderness now? Many, or perhaps even most, of the normal things we take for granted and enjoy have been taken away. Time together with family, working with colleagues, coffee with friends, getting together with our pals, swimming, the gym, yoga, pilates. By and large, we are confined to barracks. And that brings its tensions. Not for nothing do we speak of cabin fever or stir crazy. And then for those of us who are self-employed, not only are we missing the routine of a day, but we're also worried about loss of income. Each of us, in our own way, is experiencing the wilderness. And let's be honest, we worry. We get anxious. We get depressed. We get bad-tempered. We get, and we can all fill that in. Jesus to chose to spend 40 days in the wilderness. He did this just before he set up his own business, as it were. He had worked as a carpenter, but now he was about to launch out and preach and teach as a wandering rabbi. In the wilderness, Jesus spent time listening to the different moods, the different voices, prompting him and telling him what to do. Jesus chose to do this to help him clarify what would be his priorities, who he was being called by God to be. Go on, the voice said, if you're the son of God, turn these stones into bread. We know there is always hunger, and to use his power to do that would have been spectacular. But Jesus knew that more than just do a quick fix, he had to teach people that there is enough bread for us all if we only share it out. And God knows we need to relearn that lesson today. Indeed, putting it in context, he might even tell us today that there are probably also just about enough toilet rolls for us all if we only buy what we need. In the wilderness, Jesus heard many voices just as we all have many different thoughts rushing into our minds during these worrying and challenging days. It isn't bad to want to have enough toilet rolls. When we need to buy some, we need to buy some. It's just that when our anxiety that we're going to run out gets hold of us and we see a shop that still has some, then the temptation comes to buy maybe more than we need. And if we and others give in to it, it leads to chaos and shortage. It isn't bad to worry and be concerned about family and food and finances and so on, quite the reverse. Our anxiety is based on love and concern and responsibility. 
It's just that when the wheels of worry start to whirl too much in our minds, they go faster and faster and faster, and we suffer. Some people find it can help to write down our thoughts and feelings, to give vent to them, to honour our concerns and worries, to get them out, or to talk with somebody who will listen and not judge. I think we all know that if a worry or anything else is bottled up, it grows in strength and power. But if it's spoken out or written down, then that lets some of its power out. And it's also helpful to see, having done that, if we can then write down or speak out a positive or calming thought that counterbalances the anxious one. These are some ways of clearing some space and some clutter and allowing the strength which we can feel in the deepest part of ourselves to come through. It is an experience of many people that as they do this, while it doesn't stop the worry, not entirely, it does hold it in balance and it allows the deep peace and strength from within to emerge. The Old Testament book of First Kings tells us that following an exhausting and threatening time, the prophet Elijah fled to the desert. He then travelled for forty days and forty nights until he went into a cave in the mountain. While in the cave, he experienced some extreme weather, which may well have mirrored his own inner turmoil. First there was a powerful wind that shattered rocks upon the mountain, but God was not there for him in the wind. Then there was an earthquake, but God was not in the earthquake. Then there was a fire, but God was not in the fire. Then after the fire came a gentle whisper, and that was the voice of God, telling him it was now time to move on and move forward. And perhaps already we have experienced inner turmoil like violent wind, earthquake and fire. The invitation is to also listen for the gentle whisper, the still small voice. Let's take a moment to bring this to God in prayer. Let's pray. Take a moment to name before God what is worrying you most right now. God of all love, God who understands us better than we understand ourselves, we place this worry before you now. Take another moment to name before God what is the next most worrying thing right now. God, who understands us better than we understand ourselves, we place this worry before you now. And is there maybe one more that you can name before God right now? God, who understands us better than we understand ourselves, we place this worry before you now. And if you want, please feel free to put me on pause right now to keep going with naming your worries to God and restart when you're ready. And can you now listen within for one good thing which in no way overturns all the worries but which is still a good thing right now, which is still a blessing to you, which is still a source of strength and comfort? Can you name that now? 
God of all love, who understands us better than we understand ourselves. Thank you for this blessing. And can you name another? God of all love, God who understands us better than we understand ourselves, thank you for this blessing. God who speaks in the quietness of our heart, speak your peace to us now and in the days to come. Amen. After this video, you might like to click on the link which takes you to a Songs of Praise recording of the hymn Dear Lord and Father of Mankind. And so, my friends, we may be nearing the end of Lent in the church year, but in this time of crisis, another season of Lent may just be starting for us. Let us draw upon the wealth of wisdom in the rich tradition of our faith, in the many stories in the Bible of God being with his people in the wilderness. In whatever ways you are led through the wilderness, may you know that among all the voices around you and inside you, clamouring for your attention and energy, know there is also the still small voice, the still small voice of God. And so, until we are in contact again, may God's peace, God's love and God's strength be with you and with all those you love today, tomorrow and every tomorrow forevermore. Amen. <laughs>